and thanks for joining us. I'm Christine Elizabeth. I share my story on YouTube to share hope for overcoming trauma that leads to things such as diagnosed or undiagnosed post-traumatic stress disorder and conditions like FND, which could look like headaches. It could look like seizures in my case. There's a lot of different um, categories of FND. But my channel is very specifically to share hope because mine is a story of overcoming. And if that's the journey that you're on, that you want to overcome, then stick around because we have a lot of great hope to share. Today, what I wanna share is a little bit of a story from my book uh, and not my book from my pre-recovery or overcoming or even my post, but actually last week. This past week, I was laying in bed. I was really tired, I had a rough night's sleep and I was laying in bed thinking about how I really didn't want to get up. And my cat, Ellie, who is the sweetest as can be, she always snuggles with me. She's just so super, super precious. She's one of my two precious little uh, kittens. And so she's running around. She's in her playful kitten mode. And before I know it, I just instinctually go and I just go to pet her. She's right by my by my pillow and I go to pet her and I startle her and she jumps right up in the air and lands right on my face. So if you can see, it's a lot better than it was before. <laughs> but two thoughts that I had. One was she has no idea what happened. She has no idea that she hurt me. She didn't do it intentionally. And so I wasn't mad at her. I just looked at her and, you know, even with a you know, stream of blood coming down my face, I looked at her and said, you have no idea what you did. I was not mad at her. And the second thought I had, you know, I'm a believer. And so I'm looking for purpose and meaning in the things that appear random. And I said, all right, God, you knew this was going to happen. What do you want me to learn from this? So I call a friend of mine who's a nurse practitioner, actually interviewed her for my channel before. Her name's Karen Kelly. She's wonderful. And she so graciously took my call at 7 a.m. When I told her what happened, sent her a photo and I said, what do I do? Well, much to my dismay, she said, don't cover it up. That kind of wound needs to dry. So here I am. I'm about to go about my day and I have to go around with this very, very fresh wound. I thought, oh, this can't be right. I still had that thought, there has to be meaning behind this. There has to be, I have to be able to get something good from this. Something good always comes from something bad. We just have to let it. So there I am sitting in my first appointment and I'm talking to a woman and I, I explain what happened and I say, I apologize. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to distract from what's going on. This just happened this morning. And I was trying to cover it up with my face, not very, I mean, with my hair, not very well. And I told her a little bit and I, and I explained to her, this is so out of character. Ellie is such a sweet, sweet girl. And she so intuitively and insightfully said to me, cats can be so sweet and loving when they're intentional. And just like humans, when we're not intentional, when we're in our, in our nature, in our flesh is another way to say it. We can be very hurtful. We can unintentionally inflict pain. And I just sat back and I thought, wow, okay, yes, here we go. And I sat and I meditated with that for a long time. I actually shared that same insight that I learned. Well, because there I was walking around with this fairly large gash, still getting asked questions about what happened. And every time I have that opportunity to share what I learned about what happens when I'm not intentional, what has happened as a result of other people in my life not being intentional, the pain that gets inflicted when we are just acting out of a reaction and not responding thoughtfully. Now that's very natural. We grow up like that, don't we? I mean, we don't learn about these things. We don't learn to act react or responsibly versus reactively. We have to practice that. It is absolutely a muscle 
that we have to practice. We have to sit and think about what people are saying. We have to be slow to anger and be very intentional about listening to hear what the person is saying. Even when a person is speaking angrily, we still have that opportunity. Granted, like I said, it's a muscle, so you're not going to start bench pressing 50 pounds the first time, and you're not going to respond very well when somebody throws that at you. But everything is an opportunity. If we look at it the right way, it's an opportunity to grow. So we've had tons and tons of opportunities to grow because we've all had people who act reactively versus responsively. But here's the point. It's not always about the other person. We actually very specifically want to take people out of the position of power and put ourselves in the position of power. We want to learn to hold on to our power and not just react, but respond and hold our power. So here's one thing I just want to challenge everybody to do. Today, when you're going around your day, think about what you want to do in somebody's life. What impact do you want to make in that person's life? Whether it's a child, a spouse, a partner, a friend, a parent, a colleague, whoever, what response do you want them to have because of their interaction with you? Do you want them to have a good response? Do you want them to feel good about that interaction? Do you want them to, I mean, we can go even a step further. Do you want them to feel good about themselves? Do you want them to think positively about the impact that they're making in your life? So think about that today. And when you have the opportunity, especially, I mean, I don't want to just say the youth as far as numbers, but everybody has people in their life or who are in the spectrum of age, uh, numerological age, who are at varying stages of maturity. It might be a good opportunity if this has taught you to share your insight with somebody that maybe needs that for their journey. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please leave, leave a like. I'd love if you leave a comment. And um, if you'd like to hear more hope and some interviews and some medical professional expert, please subscribe to the channel. Take care.